Growing up, I had dreams and aspirations, but always felt like the kid that didn't fit in. For the most part, I wasn't a bad kid, but when I made the transition into adulthood, I turned to the streets for guidance. This led to getting locked up in juvenile hall, doing time in CYA, and eventually a 120 month sentence in federal prison. I had a lot of time to think and reflect during my federal sentence. So I share with you what I learned, hoping I can positively influence someone else's life with Prison Talk. What's up everybody? Big Hurt, Prison Talk. You guys always ask me a lot of questions and a lot of times those questions are different for different people because people have been in different spots. I'm here with Young Dirt and um, I'm gonna have him answer, you know, a couple of different questions for you guys so you guys can get insight from somebody else. And make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Um, Dirt, um, a lot of people ask us about like politics in prison, you know, like, you know, where do you sit? Or if I'm Asian, who do I hang out with? And, you know, do, you know, white guys talk to black guys or do, you know, Mexicans talk to black guys? Do mm -hmm. black guys talk to Mexicans? You know, and I know you mentioned um, before as far as like doing business with other races. Yeah. You know, how does that, how does that work in, in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a prison, man, in a state prison? So, first off, it, it's, it's different in the levels. Because once you start getting down to level two and one and ranch and stuff, the politics change drastically. So on level three or level four yard, for example, I pull up on the yard, I show you my paperwork, but most likely, like with me, if I pull up on the yard, everybody pretty much know who I am. So I'm gonna show you my paperwork, then they're gonna, we're gonna let the older homie know that you here, whoever got the yard. And then from there, you start asking questions. Whatever, whatever, homie, whether you are, like, since I'm a blood, I'm going to get out of L.A. blood. I said, I'm going to get out of black, period. Mm -hmm. And let me know what's our phones, what's our showers, what's our bars, what's our basketball court. When we go to the chow hall, where do we sit? Uh, sometimes in some places, where do we sit in church? <laughs> yeah. So... That's what that's basically the politics right there. So when as far as the the violence aspect of it, if something happens and like say you it's me and you and we see a black and a white getting into it, I ain't gonna lie, off top we know it's going down. Period. If in some rare situations, and that's rare, if that if the dude is dogging a white dude out. If the white dudes ain't tripping, we ain't tripping. But that's rare. What so what'll happen is we gotta go. So usually right off the top, if we see a white and black guy get into it, it's about to kick off. Yeah, it's about to go. We gotta go. Because the first thing that's gonna happen is once we all in the hole, pepper sprayed up, and we gonna be talking, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that. Where was you? Yeah, I did that. And if you ain't accounted for, people gonna you're gonna see the kites start sliding them up. <laughs> Hey, take the or you gonna hear? Hey, take this kite to whoop the whoop. You gonna know? People asking questions. So as soon as y'all just get back on the main line, you gonna be on the menu. Mm. So, so somebody asked me like, so if something jumps off, and you didn't participate, or they find out you were watching, what's gonna happen to you because you you let a, you know you let another homie get get uh you know get smacked up? I give you an example. My celly in Old Folsom, uh, he was in the shower area and. The sack homies in the L.A. Bloods got into it with some Crips. And my celly, he didn't get involved. Even though he's not a blood, the way Sacramento is is an umbrella. You can be a, in some cases, you can be a Crip and function with the sap car. Or you can be a, from any part of Sacramento. We're all together. We're an umbrella. But he was under that without no gang ties. But he didn't participate because you didn't been at spreads with us. You've been in the meetings with us. You work out with us. You mm. party with us. He didn't participate. So instead of getting him off the yard, he had to run that back-to-back -back fade. Mm. Even though the first young homie wore him out. But still, he had to catch that second one. But after that, he decided he didn't want to be no parts of the Sacramento umbrella. <laughs> it was mm. like, y'all doing too much. I'm out. But still, that right there... As far as prison goes and politics, I pay I played my part. I played my part. I went through all the levels to where I mean young homies came to they come to me. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of little brothers. I'm everybody big bro in there. And as far as like a lot of the 
you know, a lot of the tension like between the different races, whether it be you know the the white boys or the the southern hispanics um you know do you think a lot of it's tied into just to drugs in prison you know what I mean as far as everything's based on economics or is trying to control the yard because you know a lot of people are like oh you know um so and so run this yard and that yard well and and I know in the feds you know you go back east ain't no you know, it's, it's different, man. It's, it's it's all based on economics. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what I mean? It ain't, you know, you got you do have gangs, but like you know, it's mm-hmm. all it's geographic. It's a little bit different. I'm gonna be honest. Most of the problems that happen are behind drugs, there in prison. Go. Most of the problems that happen are behind somebody owns somebody. Somebody owns somebody, because you have like like when I when I first started when I first came to prison, I was I was putting in work always in the hole and everything, and I realized. Man, I'm not. I'm only getting. I'm only selling 50 balls and 100 balls, man. There's a light. There's a level above this, and I'm trying to realize why I'm not getting in. So, my older cousin, who's from the Heights, you probably know him, Stephen. The free Stephen Stowers. That's my cousin. But still, uh, he opened the book of hustle to me in prison. He taught me how to hustle in prison. Mm. So. And then he told me what was wrong. And what was wrong is I was running around here putting in work thinking that that was something. But the ballers is not going to let you in because you're a problem child. Mm. They'll throw you a crumb and Too be much like. attention. Yeah, they'll throw you a crumb and be like, yeah, I know you're going to do something. Here you go. And just, you know, to keep it cool. But so once I learned to humble myself somewhat and then uh, use my mind, they started putting me on. So I was in the pen eating. I was in Calipat one time and had like. 1800 cash in the cell. Mm. Even though I ain't a lot, but that's that's in the cell. And I took a picture throwing up the B <laughs> and put it on Facebook. Man, the next day the goon squad was at oh, my door. Oh, that quick, huh? Man, that quick. They kicked in the door. Oh, shit. They kicked in the door, basically. Well, we say kick in the door, but they just slung the cell door open. And they stepped, they, they snatched me and my celly, Mikey GP from Skyline, out and put him on the, put us on the wall. They said, who Curdy Kurt Luminous? <laughs> my celly. <laughs> My celly, was, he had his face against the wall, he said, <coughs> <laughs> and busted up laughing. So, I mean, they knew it was me, but I had to, I mean, I can talk about it now, but I had the money up, up you know, somewhere else. And uh, <laughs> so they didn't get it. But they had a feeling because when they had me in the shower talking about bend over, squat, and cough, they, you know, they got this thing where they, if they believe you got something, they'd be like, make it wink. So they want you to bend over, squat, cough, they, <laughs> they say, cough louder. <laughs> All right, make it wink. <laughs> So at the end of the day, yeah, so, so <laughs> that didn't work. So is it, is, as far as like in the in the state is uh, you know, cause I, I you know growing up in Sac, man, some of my best partners were Mexican, man. And I told dudes I had a Mexican celly in the feds, and they was tripping cause they like, what you doing? The LA dudes like, what you doing with this Mexican? But man, we from up north, it's different. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We function in the neighborhoods. Yeah. It's like Mexican be like, what's up, my nigga too? I mean, we yeah. like family, so it's a little bit different. And I you know I kicked it with some of the cats. Like the North Daniels, I was able to sit over there because you know we yeah. from up north. Be just because the way I did my program, but um, is it the same where you was at as far as in the state? I mean, is the northern Mexicans kind of cool? Is it with a with a cool or different than dealing with the guys from down south? Did you notice the difference? In general, geographically, yeah. In general, where I'm, where we from, the Asians say nigga, the 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 northerners say nigga more than us. Yeah, yeah. They call each other nigga more than us. Period. The white boys even say nigga that that grew up around us, so that's really nothing to us. But somebody else will hear that and be like, "Whoa!" So geographically, oh yeah, geographically, like certain Northaniels, they act like Southsiders. We don't really mess with, we don't get along because them the ones that are calling the shots or trying to influence all the rest because they're mm. the structured ones. I don't really get along with them. But the ones that grew up, like you were talking about, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that'd be like, what's up with it, bro? Those ones, yeah, we cool. But there was, I didn't been in like three riots with them. So mm. some changed in like 05, I think. 05, 06, they started, I mean, we blacks in North Daniels started getting into it all up and down California. Mm. And things, I mean, changed. But it's not no immediate tension with them, it never is. But they just, they just like us. And, and they bring it too. And then, as far as like the white boys, there's no no interaction. No, nah, ain't no interaction unless you on a lower level. You got yeah. like OGs or something that they might be on a yard playing guitar or something together, or they <laughs> yeah. church buddies, or law library, or they might be in an older sports league or something like that. But 
far as interaction, the only time you're gonna see a black and a white boy talking is about some legal stuff or some yep. drugs uh, or uh. something. And you can pretty much tell what's going on by the characters because prison is a process of repetitiveness. That's right, that's right. Yeah. So there you guys have it, man. A little bit of politics about the state, you know, the state institutions, man. A lot different than the feds and um, just how people communicate, man. And the bottom line is stay your ass on the streets, man, so you ain't got to deal with all the ignorance, man, the right. bullshit, you know. Big Hurt, Young Dirt, Prison Talk. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.